All right. 17th. All right, uh, so thank you all for uh, <clears throat> um, accepting that I was unable to go live for this class and then I have to pre-record it. I also had uh, a million and one other things happen, which I may, you may have heard me say in the other recorded video for Math 154, uh, some home construction stuff going on. So my time is even shorter than I uh, was hoping for a lot of things. So I'm gonna have to be done in about 30 minutes. But uh, that still gives us enough time to kind of go over what it is I want to go over. So let's not delay. <clears throat> let's go ahead and get into it. So I am going to be pulling from the week four my math lab homework assignments in the MD54 file today. Um, I went ahead straight to number three. The first two problems are literally the same as this one and quite literally the same as what we were working on last time where we've got uh, equivalent fractions we're trying to build up to, <clears throat> getting us used to the idea of getting an LCD. Um, so if we wanted to add or subtract fractions. <clears throat> All right, so find the missing numerator so the fractions will be equal. First, I gotta do this. There we go, much better. <clears throat> so we got two over 11. I gotta do one more thing first. There we go. <clears throat> 2 over 11 equals something over 77. So the idea I said last time was you take the denominators and you divide them. 77 divided by 11 would be 7. And then you take that result, at 7, and you multiply it by the top number, the 2. 7 times 2 is 14. So 14 should be our answer. And that's it. So what we said is 2 elevenths is the same as 14 over 77. And remember, if you don't trust these, you can reduce your, uh, the right-hand side uh, and you should get the left-hand side. Now, if the left-hand side was reducible because that's possible, that means you'd have to reduce both of them to confirm that they're the same thing. <clears throat> now, I definitely wanted to do this one because the first fraction, the one on the left, does not have a denominator written. So you need to remember that a whole number, I definitely hit blue, <laughs> you saw that, eight is the same thing as eight over one. That's very important for this because you have to be able to see the denominator of the one. So we're saying eight over one is equal to what over five? So we take the de denominators and divide them. Five divided by one is five. And then we take that number and we multiply it by the original top, five times eight, is 40, and that should be our new numerator. I am gonna be going a little quicker through these <clears throat> because of the short time. Remember that YouTube has a, uh, a little, it looks like a wheel, uh, and it's your settings wheel, and you can slow down to 50 or 75% if I am going too fast. <clears throat> One more like this, uh, 4 sevenths is what over 49? Just gonna keep switching colors back and forth. Um, so you say 49, I clicked it again. Technology, am I right? 49 divided by seven is seven. Then you take that number, just a coincidence they were the same, and you multiply by the top. Seven times four is 28. You're going to need to do these dozens and dozens and dozens of times until you can do them on your own, without assistance, without practice. <clears throat> and then three months later, you can still do them. All right, so that's enough of those. All right, during the last five days, a student spent 11 hours studying mathematics at home. During the last five days, a student spent 11 hours. This, this student sounds like they were in both MDE 54 and Math 154 because <laughs> uh, you're supposed to be spending six hours a week for every three credit hours. Uh, that's six hours, I mean studying, homework, whatever. So if you're taking six credits of math between 54 and 154, that means you should be studying homework, whatever, 12 hours a week. So the student's on a good pace. During the last almost week, they studied 11 hours. So in those other two days, they can get their one more hour in. And remember, that's in addition to class time. Don't forget that. On average, <clears throat> excuse me, on average, how much time is this per day? So average, 
means in general you're adding up a bunch of different things and dividing by the number of things but this is a little different because they're giving you a total amount over a span of time it's not a bunch of different individual amounts so instead the basic idea especially since they say per day <coughs> is to divide these so i've given a couple of hints for the past two classes in math 154 the word per means the next thing is a denominator so because they see day that means anything that's a value of days would be a bottom. So they're saying how much time, the students spent on average how much time per day. So this is us using our words. We need to do time over days because that's time per day. Time, top, days, bottom. How do I know that? The word per. Time came before it, top. Day, days came after it, bottom. So what we're doing is just dividing the 11 hours. And notice I'm using my units in this. This is going to be a common theme in the Math 154 class coming up, especially once we hit chapter three, divided by the number of days, which is five days. And then we can pull up a calculator if we like, since they say to type an integer or simplified fraction. Uh, I'm going to do this wrong, probably, intentionally. That's a big calculator. <laughs> All right, so we can just do. 11 divided by 5, and let's see if this will give us what we want, 2.2. So if I type 2.2, which is a pretty good answer, it says wrong, although your answer is equal to the correct answer, it is not in the correct form. This is something I've tried to warn you about multiple times. They said to type an integer, which basically means whole number, positive or negative, or a simplified fraction, which means because the answer was a decimal, and sure, in the real world, nobody's going to care that it's a decimal, but here my math lab wants a reduced fraction. So if there's a number that goes into both 11 and five, then you would divide that out and reduce it. For instance, if this was say um, 12 over 15, three goes into both of those, three would go into 12 four times and into 15 five times, so the answer would be four fifths. But there's no number besides one that goes into 11 and five, so you just type 11 over five. Now, you might go, hey, Mr. Beckner, how'd you get that fraction bar? You didn't click the fraction bar. <clears throat> I typed 11, then I hit my division key, which looks like a slash on the keyboard. That automatically makes a fraction. It won't work for a mixed number. You'd have to click the mixed number, but that's an alternate way to do it. And we got it right now. <clears throat> so pay attention to the instructions. Write the ratio in simplest form, 21 to 33. So we got 21 over 33, no units, so no words. And three goes into both of these. Some people will do their work this way. They'll slash and say three goes into 21 seven times, three goes into 33 11 times, which gives us seven over 11. Or some people will show their work like this. And they'll say, all right, three goes into this one, three goes into this one. You have to pick a number that goes into both. And you want to get the biggest number or you'll have to do this again and then you still get the same answer of 7 elevenths. I don't care how you get jo jobs done, I just care that you do them. 7 slash 11, beautiful. Next question. Remember, there is a slow down button in YouTube. Please feel free to use it. <laughs> um, 36 to 32. So we got 36 on top of 32. Again, I hit this, oh well, doesn't matter. 36 divided by 32, pay attention. This is how simple mistakes are made. You know what? I'm doing this whole thing in black. 36 to 32. The word two also kind of is like the word per. It means the next thing goes in the bottom. I much prefer the slash method personally. Some people might just not even write anything and go straight to the answer of, I don't know, two over three if that was it, which it's not. If you can go straight to the answer, that's fine. Let's see. Two would go into both 36 and 32. So I could divide both of these by two. 2 will go into 36 18 times, 2 will go into 32 16 times. Spoilers, this is wrong. Uh, so I get excited, I reduced it, and I go 18 over 16, and it tells me I'm wrong. Although your answer is correct, it is not in the correct form. They don't always give you exact instructions on, oh, it's right, but not right. So you have figured out, what else is going on here? Well, both 18 and 16 are divisible by 2. So you got to divide those by 2. That's, that's a 6 in the bottom. That's just an ugly 6. So, 2 goes into 18 9 times, 2 goes into 16 8 times. So let's see if 9 eighths will give us the answer. 9 slash 8, boom, we're good. So alternatively, 
you could have said 36 over 32. You may recognize that four goes into both of these. Four goes into 36 nine times and four goes into 32 eight times, giving us the answer right out of the gate. So you can reduce these in multiple steps or one step. Sometimes it just depends on which numbers you are looking at, seeking out and how you do it. But when you reduce, make sure that your answer isn't reducible even more. 70 minutes to 30 minutes, 70 over 30, 10 is going to go into both of those. 10 will go into 70 seven times, 10 will go into 33 times. 7 thirds is reduced as much as possible. 7 slash 3, boom, we're good. All right. I'm not going to do any more of those, which is good because there was only one more. <clears throat> Indicate whether the statement is true or false. Two fifths. So, what they're really saying here, <laughs> come on, why is it doing that to me today? Technology. I know why now. I just figured it out because I'm clicking between one thing and another thing. So it's not registering the, the color change. Not that you care. Two fifths. This is what we're saying. Is it equal to six over 20? So there's two ways you can do this. One of them is to reduce both sides as much as possible and see if they match. If they do, then it's a true. If they don't, it's a false. Another way is, and this is the only way I'm actually going to show, is to cross multiply and see if the left side is the same as the right side. So we've been doing a whole bunch of proportion solving in regular 154 for the past week, week and a half, technically, since we missed a class. Um, so, so being specific, the last two classes. Um, but all of those had a variable in one of these spots and we were doing algebra and solving it. This doesn't have a variable, we're just cross multiplying and seeing if we get the same number. So when we cross multiply, we take the two times the 20, and then we'll take the five times the six, and we're saying, are these equal to each other? It's good to write the question mark, but I'm not going to discount you if you don't. 2 times 20 is 40. 5 times 6 is 30. That is a big fat no. That's false. Those are not the same. If you reduce the right-hand side, uh, 2 will go into both of those. You'll end up with 3 tenths. 3 tenths is not 2 fifths, so that also says false. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to do a bunch of these. Cross multiply. Uh, we will do one where we actually solve in case uh, you just need to see that one more time outside of regular class. So cross multiplying, take the eight times the 13, set it equal to the X times the two. I prefer to write the two first, but it doesn't technically matter. All right, uh, eight times 13, 10 eights is 80, three of them is 24. So that should be 104 and that'll be equal to two X. Now, as a reminder, it's very simple algebra. If you have two times a number, three times a number, five times a number, if there's only this one step, it's only this one thing to get rid of on the side of the variable. If that's a multiplication, you divide both sides. If it was an addition, you would subtract. If it was a subtraction, you would add. If it was a division, you'd multiply. Remember that addition and subtraction are opposites. Multiplication and division are opposites. And then half of 104 should be 52. So that should be our X. Let's see if it's right. Maybe your teacher led you down the wrong path intentionally. Maybe you didn't. I always like to keep you on your toes. You never know, right? But that's because there's, that's how things work when you're doing stuff. And I know I've made one or two mistakes on accident. Um, but again, I, I like that because it proves that everyone's human. Everybody makes mistakes. But we can get the answer, see that it's wrong, and figure out what we did wrong. That's true learning. Doing things wrong and then doing them right. One more of these. Uh, six time six over x let's write it first equals two over 11 cross multiply six times 11 and then the two times the x set them equal to each other which is 66 is equal to 2x again divide both sides by two and you'll get 33 equals x i'm not going to do a lot of wrong, th wrong things today given the short time all right, that's another one. Try it out on your own. Try it out on your own. We gave you a whole bunch of these to try out on your own. All right, so this is getting into the true nature of proportions, throwing them in word problems, making them much more real world like. The nutrition information on the cereal box says that a third of a cup serving provides 100 calories and four grams of dietary fiber. At this rate, how many calories and grams of fiber are in a half a cup of a half cup serving? So 
this is a very, uh, this is a definitely a more challenging problem because there's actually two different proportions you're kind of setting up here. So a third of a cup provides 100 calories and four grams. In fact, uh, let's circle back to this one. Sorry. I want to circle back to that one <laughs> uh, in the interest of time because that's going to take me about uh, 12 minutes to go through because of the fractions. Sorry about that. The, the half and the third are going to muddy things up a little bit, and I don't want to take the you know half of the time remaining for one problem. So circle back to that. Let me make a little note to myself. Ah, silly. Number 18. Stop it. All right. Identify the operation to perform on each side of the following equation to isolate the variable. X plus 5 equals 7. So this is what I was talking about a couple minutes ago. Um, when we have the proportions, when we saw 2 times x, the opposite of multiplication is division, which is why I chose to divide 2 on both sides. Same with the previous example, just coincidental numbers. This one, what we've got is x plus 5 equals 7. And the main idea of algebraic equations is to isolate the variable. You're trying to get this thing by itself. You don't want to see the 5 on the same side. What I like to say is that 5 has got COVID-19 or the flu or the cold or whatever you want to go with. And the X is scared and wants to be isolated from it. So we've got to move the 5 over. But the rules of equations say to move things from side to side means you have to do opposite operations. So because this 5 is being added to the variable, that means what we have to do is subtract 5. And then the other idea is that whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, which would end up giving us x is equal to the 5 minus 5 cancel. 7 minus 5 is 2. That would be our solution. Now, you might say, well, it doesn't ask me to write x equals 2 anywhere. That's because the instructions weren't to solve it. Just what do we do? Identify the operation to perform on each side. That's the reading. We subtracted 5 on both sides. <clears throat> now, there's something cool about equations. Technically, I can do just about anything I want to on that equation. I can add 3 on both sides. I can multiply by 17. I can divide by pi. I can square both sides. I can square root both sides. Asterisks, kind of, but we don't do that in this class, really. Um, but you don't want to just work randomly and do whatever you want to do. you got to work with purpose. So you got to think about, what am I trying to get rid of? I'm trying to get rid of the plus 5. So I need to do the exact opposite of plus five, which is minus five. If that was x minus five originally, I'd need to add five to both sides to get rid of it. Similar here, x minus seven is equal to nine because we want the variable isolated. We want this by itself. This minus seven has got to go because that's a minus seven. To move it, we add seven to both sides. So answer A again. If you don't believe me, well, oh, subtract 7. Let's try it out. Nope. Cool. <clears throat> then we get in that sum where we actually want to solve it. So we got W minus 14 is equal to 22. So on the side of the variable, this is the thing we want by itself. We need to move the minus 14. To move that, we have to add 14 to both sides. If you don't write things vertically, I don't care. If you write them horizontally, that's fine. If you don't write this at all, if you get the right answer, that's fine. 22 plus 14, well, 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 plus 1 is 3, so 36. I'm going to do this wrong. W equals 36. Hmm, that's incorrect. Solve it, blah, 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 blah. This actually tells us nothing about what we did wrong. What did I do wrong? Because I've seen students do this. I've definitely seen students do this. I wrote the variable in there, but the variable was already set up for us. So all we really needed to do was write the 36. Cool. More of those. Like I said, I'm trying to get as much done as I can in 30 minutes. More, more. Um, actually, we'll do this one's a little more challenging, and it's a decimal, so let's mix it up. X plus 5.1. Equals eight. Technically, it's not challenging since you're allowed calculators, in my opinion, but I'm going to do it by hand. So that says plus 5.1. So we subtract 5.1 on both sides. Now, when you add and subtract decimal values, you're supposed to line up the decimal. Now, there's no decimal written in this eight originally. So the eight is the whole, the five is the whole, which means the five goes into the eight, 
and then a point 0.1 obviously goes to the right of that. So here's what you want to do. You want to take that 8, put a decimal in there, and a filler 0. When you're adding and subtracting, you need these decimals lined up, and then you just bring it down, and you subtract uh, like they were whole numbers, 80 minus 51. 0 minus 1 you can't do, so you got to borrow from the 8, that becomes a 7, the 0 becomes a 10, 10 minus 1 is 9, 7 minus 5 is 2. That gives us x is equal to 2.9. Again, this is a skill you should have at this level. I should be able to give you a calculator list test on this stuff, and everybody gets hundreds in theory. There's another one, but that one already had a decimal, so it's not too bad. Something I brought up at least once before, um, either in this course or 154, I think in this course, uh, that we have some special phrases uh, when we're setting up, going from sentences to equations or expressions. Phrases like less than means you're going to reverse the order of what you see. So six less than n is not six minus n, it's actually n minus six. Again, less than reverses the order of those two things. The word is means equals in equation words, and then 13 means 13. They didn't ask us to solve it, they just asked to set it up. n minus 6 equals 13. Maybe you don't trust me on that less than. Let's try c. 6 minus n. Check. Nope. Note, less than indicates subtraction, but they don't even remind you that they reverse it. So you might, well, that is a subtraction. Well, again, Mr. Beckner reminded you at least multiple times that it reverses it. All right. Uh, oh, then solve. That's what happened. Okay, then solve. We got to pay attention and read instructions. What happens when we rush? There are nine minutes left. So n minus 6 equals 13. We're trying to get the n by itself, which means the minus 6 is what needs to go away. But we don't just scratch it out like that. Since it says minus 6, we add 6 to both sides. We will not be giving you extremely complex algebraic equations to solve by hand in this course, but you will get simple ones like this. Proportions over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Notice I didn't have to type the n and the equals because it was already there for us. Um, if the variable's on the right side, does that really affect anything? No. 6 equals x minus 8.4. The x is what you're trying to isolate, so you got to get rid of the minus 8.4. We do that by adding on both sides. Add 8.4. You'll want to make that up 6.0 then. Add 8.4. And then we get equals x on the right side. Those cancel. And then 6 plus, sorry, 60 plus 84. Well, 0 plus 4 is 4. Bring down your decimal. 6 and 8 is 14. All right, give me 10 seconds. Okay. Didn't even need it. 14.4. Sounds good. Uh, if you want to check your solutions, you just plug it in. So we got 5 minus x is equal to 2. They say, is 2 a solution? So turn the x into a 2. So we go 5 minus, I'll use red for the substitution, 2. Now what we're saying is, is this equal to what we originally had on the right-hand side? Two. Well, five minus two is three, which is a big fat no. Three is not two. Fill in the blank. In the equation two x equals six, blank each side of the equation by two to isolate the variable. So this is not two plus x, this is not two minus x, this is two times x. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we should be dividing both sides by 2. They only give us two options, multiply or divide. If you try multiply, final check, nope, it was wrong, we're supposed to divide. Try again. Literally the same problem, <laughs> divide, boom, we're good. Be funny if it was wrong, right? This one, identify the operation, so this is x divided by 4, so because what you see is a division, you need to multiply. Do you multiply by 5? Question mark, question mark, hint, inflection in voice, no. Multiply by 4. We have to do it this way. So we had x over 4 is equal to 5. This is what you would do. That 4 is in the bottom. We got to get rid of the 4 in the bottom. So that's why we multiply both sides by 4, because a 4 in a top and a bottom as a product and division all cancel. And then what you end up with is x equals 4 times 5, which is 20. They didn't ask for the answer, but there it is. Or did they? 
did not receive credit. Oh, I didn't actually check it, did I? <laughs> Let's go back. There we go. Divide by three, you get 11. <laughs> Multiply by two, you'll get 22. Divide by two and you'll get two. Multiply both sides by three and you'll get 30. Here's an interesting one. 0 0.3, come on. Black, thank you. 0 0.3x equals nine. That's a product, so we gotta divide, but we gotta divide both sides not by three, but by 0 0.3. Now you got calculators, so that's probably gonna be how you do this. But as a reminder, what you should understand is that you can't divide by decimals. So this nine divided by 0.3, what you have to do is make the bottom a whole number by moving its decimal right as many times as you have to, which would be once in this case. But whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. It's kind of like an equation, whatever you do to the left, do to the right. So that'd be a filler zero, and what you end up with is 90 divided by three. So nine divided by 0.3 is the same as 90 divided by three. It's also the same as 900 divided by 30, 9,000 divided by 300. I can keep moving it as much as I want, but once the bottom's whole, that's all you really gotta do. So X is equal to 90 divided by three, which is three will go into nine three times, tag the zero, cause it's perfect, 30. So that's a nice trick to have. Again, I know <laughs> you're gonna be using calculators more than I like, and that's okay, because it's the real world. That's what this class is supposed to be for. Um, the fact that this is written as 1 8 instead of x over 8 doesn't change anything. Multiply both sides by 8, and you'd get 80. Uh, honestly, this problem we're not ready to do yet. I didn't think about And that's just because this problem is a little further in Chapter 2 than where we've gotten in the regular class, so skipping for now. Uh, also skipping, I think that's probably the case for the rest of these for now. I want, I just, these are doable, um, especially with the multiple choice ones, but I haven't talked about things like inflation in, in the regular class. Inflation makes things less valuable over time, just FYI. Um, this is a homework question and yeah, I don't want to do that one because it's also a homework question in 154. Again, all this stuff is stuff we're not ready for. So this is going to end up draining into week five as well. I did mention that we'd fall behind at some point, and this is us finally starting to fall behind. Okay, so that'll be it for that for now. So let's go back to the, in the three minutes I have. Um, week four, stress management. Remember, lots of questions. First one's a video, so I always go to the second one. Jackie is a freshman in college. She works and studies a lot. Jackie is also pledging a sorority and is required to attend sorority service and fellowship activities. Jackie feels that the most stressful part of college is pressure to drink at off-campus parties. What strategy can Jackie use to lower her stress levels related to this problem? So I think this one's pretty interesting. It's, you know, I guess a social dilemma that Jackie feels the most stressful part of college is pressure to drink at off-campus parties. It's not the stress of tests, or studying or going to class or, or getting somewhere on time or dressing appropriately, it's partying. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's how some of us are. So that's facts of life. What strategy can Jackie use to lower her stress levels related to this problem? Drop out of the sorority so she can avoid future parties. I mean, the sorority might have some other good things besides just off-campus parties. Plan to use over-the-counter health aids and exercise after the next party. I don't really think that's gonna help stress uh, before. They're just you know, stressing over a hangover or something. Plan whether and to what extent she will drink before attending a party. I mean, you could include zero uh, or very little in that. Plan to get at least seven hours of sleep after the next party. Again, aftermath, probably not the important side. A and C seem like the most possible, but like I said, sororities and fraternities do lots of other good things besides just party, <laughs> whether you've heard otherwise or not. So plan whether and to what extent she will drink before attending the party. You don't have to succumb to peer pressure, all that stuff. What life skill is closely related to stress management? Money management, social choices, time management, career choices. Oh man, that's, that seems like a lot of those might be possible at first glance, I think. What life skill is closely related to stress management? Stress management. I feel like money management and time management 
are probably pretty close, but career choices could also envelop money management and time management. Social choices, you know, they, they just talked about the last question, stress management on a, on a social choice, but it's not the only type of stress that we can see. Career choice. Stress management is closely related to time management. Well, wow, they just pretty much gave you the blatant answer that I was trying to avoid. <laughs> um, money management, I honestly think, is pretty stressful to a lot of people, especially since I would say nine out of 10 Americans do not know how to manage their money. But time, I mean, no matter how much money you have, you, you decide to make, you can't affect the amount of time you have in total, so you have to manage what you're given well. You can find a way to make more money. You can't find a way to make more time. And that's got to be time, pun intended. Uh, that's all the time I have, unfortunately. Like I said, something came up. I have someone about to knock on my door in 15 seconds, probably. I just saw him pull up. So that'll be it for the day. I will have this uh, lecture set up for, you know, on class time in a few hours. So watch it, practice it, go back and, and do these on your own. Spend yeah, you're not going to be spending probably six hours a week doing just the two different sets of assignments in here. So use that time that you've been assigned basically by taking the credits to work even more on the MD, I'm sorry, the MTH 154 stuff, the regular class. All right, so have a good one. Take care. We'll see you on Tuesday.